If you're a fan of rich, beefy stews filled with umami flavor, then this oxtail stew from the Philippines is the dish for you. If you're a Filipino, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not, the closest thing I can think of that has somewhat of a similar flavor is imagine a peanut satay sauce, but then turn that into a curry-like preparation where you have a protein and lots of that peanutty, beautiful sauce. That paired with all the thick fattiness and collagen you get from oxtail and beef. It's glorious. So the origins of kare kare, even in the Philippines, is quite contested. Depending on who you ask, different regions will claim it. What we do know is that it probably comes from an Indian sepoy or Moro origin, where they would make their own version of what we call a kari. A kari you can find everywhere around South and Southeast Asia, so it basically translates into curry. So usually it's a protein or some vegetables or protein and vegetables with lots of sauce and then different types of aromatics. So let's get right into it. The most common kare kare recipes that you'll find um, online, on the internet, or in books usually uses oxtails, but I feel like, yes, the flavor you get from it is absolutely fantastic, but it does lack kind of like heaviness in terms of how much protein you get in there. So I thought putting a beef shank with some bone marrow in there could just make it all more beautiful. We're gonna start by both tenderizing our meat and creating a deep broth. Season your oxtail and beef shanks generously. We're gonna fry every piece with some oil just until every side has a deep brown color. That goes into a large stock pot covered with water, onions, garlic, bay leaves, and a little bit of salt. This is gonna cook down for about three hours. If you don't want your shank to be frail, Optionally, you can tie it together with some kitchen twine. After the long cook, cool everything down to room temperature and place it in the fridge overnight. The next day, you'll be able to clearly separate the fat from the meat and the broth. Take out as much fat as you can, but please do not throw it away. That is all flavor. Once separated, remove the meat and strain the broth. This is gonna give your sauce that really beefy depth. Let's get all the other stuff ready. For the vegetables, all we need is some red onions, garlic, tomatoes, up to you if you want to pit them or not, eggplants, pet chai, and long beans. You can chop these up or decide to tie them up. Usually, anatta water is added to the dish for coloring purposes, but I'd rather give it color and flavor, so I'd recommend making a quick anatta oil to cook everything. So peanut butter is a key ingredient to this recipe, yet when people um, usually list down their ingredients and their recipes, they don't really give you the brand. But if you've been to the supermarket recently, then you know that different brands will have different additives or different ingredients in them. So that's why I like to make it myself so that I can control um, the salt and the sweetness that I'm adding into it with the levels of sugar that I put in. Last step for our thickeners, the most important one is the toasted rice. So get a pan out on medium heat and throw in some rice. We're gonna toast these until they get slightly charred and smoky, and then we're gonna blend them until they become a fine powder. We're gonna do the exact same thing with the peanuts. The peanut powder can then be used both as a thickener or as something to plate with. All your elements should now be ready. In a large stock pot, heat up your anatta oil and fry up your onions, garlic, and tomatoes for five minutes until fragrant. If the oil starts drying up, or even if it doesn't, add a couple of tablespoons of that skimmed fat. Next, we're gonna add our fresh peanut butter, our beef broth, and if you didn't add sugar yet to your fresh homemade peanut butter, at this point, you can adjust with sugar. 
our oxtail and shank goes back in and we will bring this to a simmer and just let it bubble away for about one hour. What we want to achieve here is for all the flavors to really just come together beautifully and let that sauce thicken out. You want it to get to a point where it's almost at the texture you want, which is not too thick, but not too liquid. Think of something a little thicker than a soup. Only after this hour of cooking would I add a little bit of fish sauce and just adjust how much I need based on how salty and savory I want it to be and how much bagaong I'm gonna be using with my kare kare later on. So yes, you can use regular flour or rice flour um, or even cornstarch to thicken the sauce. Um, tons of different recipes call for different types of ingredients, but I feel like the toasted ground rice will really bring it to a different level. What you need to do is once you have a fine powder, you add that in the last 10 minutes of the cook, and that's when you're gonna add also your vegetables. So they really just cook last minute and they stay nice and crunchy. You could steam, blanch, grill, or even roast these vegetables separately, but I like putting them on the top of the meat just to soak some of its flavor. When eating this, this is the type of dish for me that it would actually make a lot of sense to add things like fresh herbs or limes or calamansis because it's such a rich, fatty flavor. Um, it would make sense to add kind of like a lot of freshness and tanginess to it. It's not traditionally done. Um, usually I think some people do eat it with um, some calamansis or some fish sauce just to give it kind of like layers of flavor, but I feel like adding something like a Thai basil maybe would really kind of set it apart and really just make it your own. Okay, let me show you how we're gonna eat this. Hopefully I can catch it with both cameras. Um, so we're gonna start with a little bit of rice on our plate, and then this peanut sauce is absolutely everything, trust me. It is so good, I kept tasting it while making it. Now all we need is some meat, some veggies as well, but that's up to us really. A little bit of veggies. Some eggplant here, some of my long beans. Bagaong is a fermented shrimp paste. Um, there's tons of different types of bagaong. This is not necessarily my favorite, um, but it'll do just well. And again, this is personal. So I've had kare kare before that ended up being um, not salty enough because people expect you to add bagaong. Um, but honestly, for me, I don't mind not adding it at all because I put a little bit of patis there. But if you still want to put some, you can. So I'm gonna put a little bit of bagaong here, just making sure that I'm in focus on this one. So mix it all together. And I really just want to show you this beef. Like you can really cut it, cut it with um, a spoon. So basically it's so tender that it just kind of disintegrates in your spoon, um, which is perfect. And that with the sauce, when you mix everything together, let's give it a try. Look at that. Now that is a bite of food. Oh, it's so good, it's so savory. You could take some of this um, uh, ground peanuts that we made a while ago and you can put that as added texture if you want to as well right on top when you plate it to make it look better. Really up to you, like that's what I love about this dish. The oxtail gives us that silkiness, fattiness, kind of like collagen fat that coats your mouth. And then you have the beef shank that we added just for extra meatiness and more beef because obviously with an oxtail you don't have much beef there. Um, and then you have the whole marrow. It's literally staring at me right now. I think when I cut these cameras, I'm gonna go straight in. I really hope you guys try out this recipe. It's bomb.